what a pleasure it is to be with you all here tonight. Uh, we're back with another episode of Camera and Flask. My name's Caleb Pike, and then I have two other beautiful gentlemen here on the lower left with the purple disheveled, not disheveled bed in the background. We have <laughs> the one and only Mr. Barden. What's going on, boss? I don't know what you're insinuating. I'm very good. Thank you. How are you, my friend? <laughs> good, 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 good. And then we have the somewhat loggish uh, <laughs> Jem Schofield. What's going on? Why here? is that? Why or am we're, I loggish? Or, or we're, we're super Rex 709 ish. One of the yeah, two. Yeah, I, I think it's just let, an let the chat thing. decide. I, <laughs> I am not pushing uh, log, but that's okay. I'll take it. Uh, okay. Maybe I'll even walk over to the camera in a minute and change some things just to to make sure. But I nineteen ninety nine. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so we've got uh, a good show lined up for you, folks. Um, would love some interaction on this one, especially. Um, with our topic, which is going to be DIY kind of uh, stuff, things that maybe aren't as uh, professional on set that you've done. Uh, would love to to hear from you guys on that. So cue all that stuff up. Um, also in the chat, we've got Bart, Joseph, Droid Media, Chris, uh, Ben Barden. Hey, there he is. Um, Joseph and other Sky, uh, Sam. Uh, six string Brian. That seems like a new name, unless I, unless I'm missing something. Also, uh, Bart, glad to see your name and see that you're, uh, you know, I mean, doing as well as one can be. Uh, Bart had a pretty rough last week, so thoughts, prayers, out to you, brother. And, yeah, that's uh, glad you're able to join us. So, Jem just disappeared. Um, so I suppose, uh, we'll just get on to beverages and what do you got for us this week, Ben? And where are you? Okay. A little update. Uh, all right. So the, there's an interesting ish story as to why I am where I am. I am going to the UK tomorrow, but I'm not on a flight until way into the afternoon, but I'm actually in a, a hotel in Prague tonight, which I don't normally do unless I've got a stupidly early flight. However, I need my air miles to pay for a ticket to NAB and the end of the year <laughs> when the all the offers end is rapidly approaching and I'm 5,000 air miles short and mm -hmm. this hotel room will clear that whole situation. Bingo. So this, this night in this hotel is sorting my trip to Vegas out for NAB. Gotcha. So that is why I'm here. Yes. And, and drink wise. Uh, so I'm in Prague, so I've gone over to the little Vietnamese supermarket across the road from this hotel and bought a can of, this is Krushevitsa, which is a, and this is a black beer. So this isn't Guinness, it's not a stout, uh, it's kind of like a black lager. I'm not normally a huge fan, but it's quite good in the winter, so I'll, I'm going to open this and hopefully not spray it all over myself and start pouring. And then... Uh, we can move on to that interesting looking bottle you were flashing earlier. Right. Am I on again, guys? Am I uh, back? You are. I can yes. hear you. Kicked me out again. Dang Ooh. It. Yeah, I was wondering, like, you know, all just that kicked over. Just kick me out. Just kick me out. Yeah, over a log. Yeah, it just Welcome kicked me back. out. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Good to see you. What do you, what do you got there to drink, Mr. Uh, Jim Schofield? Well, before I, because uh, what I have this week is, is kind of boring because I keep drinking it because I'm now trying to finish the bottle so that I can buy a new one. Mm. But uh, we just had Thanksgiving. And for other people who are going into the holiday season very soon, I thought it is Cameron Flask. So let's just do a little recipe for a little drink that I'm not going to drink today, but everybody can maybe take into consideration. So I'm going to do that quickly. So um, starts with uh, apple cider. So not apple juice, but apple cider. So get some, get a thing of apple cider. You're going to get some, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with them. They're called mulling spices. So you're going to get mm. some mulling spices. Uh, put those in some cheesecloth, about a handful of that with some string. And then you're going to basically in a pot, bring that to a boil, to a simmer, or put it in a crock pot. And then just let that all steep and get all that deliciousness in there. Uh, cool to room temperature, and then you're going to put that over ice along with a bourbon or rye of your choice. This, this is a uh, Knob Creek. Creek. This, this is, is pretty interesting stuff. stuff. It's a uh, Knob Creek. It's called smoked maple. So it's basically the mold apple cider over ice with smoked uh, maple bourbon. 
and it was delicious on Thanksgiving, and it can do wonders. So there you go. I guess you could drink it warm too if you want. So there's your recipe for the holidays. Um, I'm keeping it simple. I'm trying to finish up this bottle of the Glenlivet 14 year in the cognac casks and it's delicious. Nice. And uh, I really just, it's still on sale, I think, at the, uh, at the liquor store. So I want to get another bottle for the holidays. Nice. So there it is. Okay, that's what I'm drinking. And what about you today, uh, Mr. Pike? What are you having? Uh, yeah, so today, Jim guessed it earlier, of course. I was trying to show Ben. Look at that. Brand Come new on. bottle. Not even Brand a new bottle. Look at that not overexposed. So is it basil or basil? basil I like saying basil. Cadence? I like saying basil because it sounds good. But basil. Well, I'm gonna get basil with basil. What about you, Ben? That, what do you say? That's basil. That's basil. 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 It is. Hey, I got my Come first on. try, and I'm awful with that kind of stuff. So, oh, good grief! It's gonna take me a while to get this all this ridiculousness uh, off here. But I would love to hear in the chat what y'all are sipping on. I saw Bart said something about Woodford. Uh, is that Woodford Reserve? It's a good one. My goodness, this. Yeah. Wooden, what. Sky said 1999, and then somebody else said uh, Knob Creek right next to Dawson's Creek. So there's like a whole throwback Bam. reference going on right now. Um, Woody, yeah. Woody's drinking Hawk's Head, which is the uh, My goodness, brewery goodness. from where I'm from. And he's what? drinking 0. 0.5 beer, which is... Not beer, but it uh, has a beer flavor. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. I guess. I've, yeah. I've not tried that one. I've not tried that one. Yeah, smoked maple for the Woodford. Um, it's a nice alternative to the Honey Jack and those other ones. It's got a different character. So if you like a sweet bourbon over ice in the summer or you want to make a mixed drink, it's good. But I don't know what this – where's Hawk's, uh, Hawk Heads? Hawk's Head in the it? Lake District. Oh, it is. In okay, cool. District. Yeah. Good, good, good. They make good, good, good. Beer. Well, like yeah. English-style ale. Yeah, is that thing. I have absolutely butchered opening this. <laughs> it's okay. Super, it's super dark in here, and I can't I can't find the little tag. Caleb needs to oh, no. Caleb needs to design a, a do-it-yourself um, whiskey, whiskey bottle opener. opener. Yeah, that's exactly what's going. Uh, on. If you're oh. if you're like me, you have no fingernails either. I don't know how you yeah, are. Yeah, but no, I oh, stuff like this always happens the day after. There we go. All right, mm. so. With that taken care of, my goodness, let's get this party started. Oh, Kim, Angel's Envy. Angel's Envy Rye is one of my favorite ryes, by, by the way. way. Uh, don't drink it at the end of the night. Don't drink it at the end of the night, the end of the night um, in, in Las Vegas, Vegas in an incredibly expensive, expensive bar. Because, because then it just won't have the magic. I'm just saying while, while I'm sitting, sitting here in the in chat. How much was that, Ben? It was a lot of money. It, it was a lot. It was, <laughs> it was a lot of money, and we really didn't need another drink that night. We really didn't. No, but we're going to. We are going to. Um, <laughs> we're going to go to Total Wine when we get there on Wednesday. By the yeah, way, my flight's are. booked. Everybody, I'm booked for NAB 2020. Very nice. We're trying to uh, wrap up the space that we're going to be doing the workshop in. Uh, yeah, there's some echo in here. I'm in a cave. Chris, I just don't know what to say about it other than that. And I don't have isotope running through my microphone in real time. It's part of the charm. There you go. What are you going to do? Uh, <laughs> so I Caleb, stay, uh, we get this cheers party started. All right, let's, oh, shoot. Ladies I and gentlemen. Yes. Yeah. Cheers. Nazdravi. Nazdravi. Very nice. Mm. Mm. So, shall we dive in? Yeah, um, I was, I was going to ask something first, though. Oh, did we, following on from last week, mm. did we did we keep our money in our pockets or did we splash out for Black Friday? Ooh. Oh, good question. Uh, I have you answers. Want I, have answers. Then? I bought two things. I bought the case we were talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, as did uh, Chris on here. Chris got his in a day. Mine might arrive before I come back from the UK in a week's time, mm -hmm. but it might yeah. not because Amazon changed the shipping dates uh, the day after I ordered it and then lied to me and said they hadn't, so I couldn't cancel it. 
or didn't. We'll see. It will be with me at some point. And I also bought Film Convert. And I've been playing with that quite a bit this week for stills as well, because it's got a plug-in for Photoshop, which is a nice little toy. Very nice. <laughs> addition. It's uh, it's very good. So that was my two. What about you two? Jim? Uh, so I bought the bowling light. Uh, oh, the nice. RGB. It was on oh, nice. a it was a flash sale for $99. So it was a no-brainer. I just did it. It was not even a, a question. Um, I did buy two other things. I can only remember one of them, but the bowling I've, I'm charging because when I first turned it on, it said it had full power and then it went down one notch like in 10 seconds. So I just want to make sure that everything's good with the battery. So I'll, I'll check on that. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing I did is I bought an upgrade to a software program called Set a Light which is from a German company. And it basically lets you set up, it's not as comprehensive as what Cine Tracer is gonna become, but it lets you do very, very quick, intuitive lighting setups, meaning the UI is intuitive, but you can do really complex lighting setups in their software. And I'm really, really impressed with the upgrade. Um, I think I paid 80 bucks for the upgrade and it's already money well spent. And it'll definitely be integrated into the teaching at NAB, as I think Cine Tracer will, though that's all kind of getting worked out right now. So those two things, the bowling RGB like that, and there is one other thing. Oh, there was a modern studio equipment sale, and I bought an, uh, a 6x6 Ultra Bounce Black um, modifier that was like 69 bucks. So again, it was kind of a no-brainer. And those are my three Cyber Week buys. How about you, Taylor? Very sick. I bought a cheap eight terabyte hard drive. Uh, it's like 120 bucks. Seagate. Wow, really? Yeah, that's amazing. What What I'll do is, uh, you know, like those black hard drives that are super cheap that are yeah. USB. Yeah. Um, well, I'll sometimes buy those and pull them out of the the case and mm. put them in something else. And they're great for like backup. So um, we have a bunch of them floating around for random stuff. But uh, for my like archive server here. It's a huge, massive raid. But then to back up that raid, I just grab all the junk drives we have floating around and throw them all in a big JBOD or like yeah. a, raid, a raid zero, uh, yeah. which for backup is fine. So there's like all kinds of different sizes, speeds. So every once in a while when that's not quite large enough, um, because we're always upgrading the, the main one, I'll just buy another eight terabyte and swap out one of the threes or fours. Um, so I got one of those and uh we bought a dyson vacuum because our nice. <laughs> pooped out nice um and then what was the third thing i bought oh uh this happens to me often i don't know if any of you do this where you're like "Ooh, there's you know some lenses i've been wanting to buy and you and you then look them up used and then yep. you end up buying used but on black friday because you find a good mm. deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so i've been meaning That's to uh, pick up some more of these uh the rokinon primes yeah. So uh, I they had a big deal, big sale. And so I found a bunch that were below average used and uh, picked up a few because I have a couple of videos and various workflows were like a few more of those. So, yeah, got that one for like this is the 85 Cine DS. I think I got it for like 200. And then there's also a 50 coming, which normally I wouldn't use these for everything. But um, the they're like the cheapest good geared mm. lenses you yeah. don't want to mess yeah. around no stinking lens gear additions just something that you can like for my uh arc 2 setup just like lenses we can quickly swap out without changing any position of anything it's just can't beat them i shot yeah. a job on on a 15 mil the new af one recently oh, which nice. optically it's really nice uh the af is not so nice or if you're trying to manually pull focus with it because it's all there's no connection to terrible it. yeah so yeah so it's yeah so it's it's terrible for that but optically it's really good beautiful so, so before we before we get into other stuff i just wanted to have a little um a little drink to bart johnson for he and his family to get through this whole thing as quickly and as painlessly as possible we're sorry to hear about everything nobody ever wants that to happen so let's uh, do a cheers to Bart and his family. 
and uh, it'll all get sorted out. Everybody's safe, including the cats. So it's all yeah. going to work out. Cheers. And Cheers. Caleb, how much whiskey have you got in that glass? Now Good we know why those it's... bottles go down. <laughs> yeah, you are, he does a live stream from home now. Leave me alone. Going on. I'm doing this thing where I'm starting to get up at 5 a.m. every day. Hmm. Um, and that part's become easy, believe it or not. The hard part is going to bed earlier. So I'm in that awkward phase where I'm starting to go to bed earlier, but not as early as I should. So mm -hmm. uh, struggled to get the, the the foil off of this. Ripped the beautiful, <laughs> poor, beautiful label. Basil but, you know, the cabinet will still look okay. And well. then uh, flusteredly poured a glass that was much too much. So I'm just going to be sipping on this, and this will be, you know, consumed later much later into the evening so it's never gonna go. make it to the cabinet that bottle Shut by up. the way <laughs> uh, just, just by the way um i know you got your invite today caleb uh if you didn't then let me know because we have to get that all sorted in the next couple of days okay uh from leah i know that's a ridiculous thing to say on the live stream but just make sure you reach out to me and we'll get that all sorted and make sure you make me look at it first um yeah. okay good right so sorry so, with that sort of gem yeah, I know. Uh, let's move on to today's to today's topic, which is going to be DIY rigging, DIY anything when it comes yes. to production. Um, where do we want to start? Maybe since I've been starting with Ben for a bunch of this stuff, let's start with Gem. Hmm? Item number one, tip number one, DIY hack trick, whatever you want to call it. Okay, I don't have a lot of stuff this week. It's been kind of, you know... I'm going to kind of show you my old standby here, which I don't know if I've, yeah, I've probably shown that in the show, but it's tried and true, and I use it uh, on almost everything. So basically, it's a three-parter. It's a nano clamp. It's a, it's a spigot that's uh, quarter 20 on one side and 3816 on the other. And it is the Monfrotto 492, not the LCD version, but the one that has the 3816 female receiver. And then what I do is I put those three parts together. Um, I put on the inside of the nano clamp, because it's just all metal, I use uh, industrial um, Velcro, and I use the really, the really thick stuff, and I only use the side that's soft. So I basically line the inside of the nano clamp with that. And then these go with me, and they get clamped to tables, they get clamped to windows, they get clamped to chairs. I put microphones on them, I put lights on them, uh, things like the Aperture MC is perfect for this, this kind of thing. Um, they're just incredibly versatile. So I usually have like two to three of these in a kit, um, just in one of those little web bags, and I just take them out, and especially when I'm traveling in situations like Ben, where I'm in a hotel and I need to shoot content, these come out all of the time, and I just stick them on the back of chairs and and everything else and that's sort of a, a DIY it's it's made of industry parts but before we started to see some things from companies like Matthews like the infinity grip and we started to see the attachments for the stuff from bright tangerine I was using this kind of uh, stuff all of the time so I that's basically yeah yep bag bag full of components that I make those sorts of things out of all the time Yep. There's a, a bag in there that weighs about a kilo and it's just full of little ball heads and little clamps. And it all looks really unprofessional when it all goes together, but it all works a treat. Yeah. And and the other thing you can add to these things is they have a quarter 20 or 3816 uh, baby pins that you can buy that are really lightweight. And you basically mm -hmm. put those on the end of this. And so if I want to put a bigger light or something on there, I just have a baby pin coming right off of this ball mount and I can position it anywhere I want. There's also, of course, cold shoe attachments that you can put onto that quarter 20. So this one little piece here can do so many different jobs when you are uh, trying to get stuff into different places. And I think it's even more relevant nowadays with these smaller LEDs, RGB accent lights from companies like uh, Aperture and Luxly and Bowling and things like that. So this thing's a, this is just sort of like an always with me um, in many versions kind of piece of kit. So that's my first one. Yep. Cool. Nice. Ben, after that sip, that glorious sip, what do we what do we have? Let's let's bring up the. The reason I put this together through some bits and pieces that I found lying around in my office 
was that when we normally shoot the show when I'm at home, when we do this live stream, I have my desk is up against the wall and I have a window and a window sill there. And I can't get a tripod behind it to mount the camera on. I can't even put a hi-hat on there. There's, there's just no room for any of that stuff. So I made the thing that you have the picture of, the really rough looking thing, which is an old hard drive RAID enclosure, which I then have mounted the Velbon head that you and oh, me yeah. both love. That's brilliant. Onto that. And then that just, because underneath there, which I know there's another picture. So you see how that is. That sits on the windowsill and is fairly stable. And I can actually put things inside that old hard drive enclosure to weigh like it brick. down. There you yeah, go. Okay. See underneath, yeah. there's a Manfrotto adapter, which takes mm. a, so you can put that one from the spigot into a super clamp. Clamp, and then you can put that's got a, a three eighths on nice. so you can then there's a hole drilled in the top of that that then goes through and then you can put a head on top and that is just a nice little desktop tripody thing so it looks that rough definitely as qualifies as a shitty rig mm. in a Doesn't good it? way oh, yeah, a very well yeah. very clean install of one very very clean install yes. of a shitty rig that is awesome very nice purely be yeah. purely because of the fact that the the actual enclosure for the hard drive is quite a nice looking piece of gear. Yeah. You know, normally that would be just made out of a lump of wood that I would have had. You should go there. off the space that enclosure a little bit, take it out in the yard, you know, and knock it about a little bit and then, and then post it on shitty rigs. It'd be awesome. I love it. Yeah, ex great. exactly. So that's an amazing little thing for just getting the camera into a tiny space and being able to position it around a bit. Mm, other nice. than, other than tonight. So, I now would need this with me, but because I'm traveling and it's not part of my kit and I'm right on my weight limit, I have, I'm in a hotel room and frequently what I do when I'm doing this, so if you have need for filming a bed in a hotel room, you can use this technique. Um, or, you know, it's pointing at the bed. Or if you're doing a live stream, it works too. I have the, the waste paper basket. I always do this. I find that, turn that thing upside down, put it on the table and then layer magazines and anything else I've got to get a height. I do the same exact thing. I have, I have a, 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 yeah, a little tape. I have like a little tabletop type tripod, or you know, yeah. you can use a Joby or something like that. And you know, the hastic, the thing that you you put your your feet on that, that they, they always have, have in hotels. I turn yeah. that on its side, and then I start building it up with books, and uh, yes. and I, that's how I get the camera up uh, if I want it to be where I want it to be. So yeah, absolutely. And, awesome. and then the other thing that I've, I've done in the same little setup here, I have the lamp and I've then on the corner of the lamp, I've got the aperture F1 just balanced on that bouncing into the wall. Perfect. So it looks horrific, but it's kind of weird. No, it looks just like, well, very similar to your home setup. It yeah. does. It, same, honestly, same, same yeah. fixtures, same yeah. fixtures, yeah. but without the beadboard and very nice. my beautiful, Chitty rig. There you go. There you go. Beautiful. Um, so I meant to grab more stuff, but I spent a lot of time in the car today. Uh, so my first one is actually going to be using tape as a uh, lens hood. I do that all the time. I hate lens hoods. Anybody else feel that way? Yeah. It's awful. And I don't want to bring a matte box to everything because that's a whole nother can of worms. Yeah. Yep. So, um, yeah, I just... Ugh, storing lenses and bags with hoods is just awful. So uh, as an example, this um, Sigma lens has a uh, uh, eighth, I believe, uh, black ProMist filter. Mm -hmm. And so no matter what you point that at, if there's any light coming at it from the side, you get a pretty gnarly flare. So if I do that, you probably see right up in here. It's kind of mm -hmm. yeah. kind of cloudy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. which, you know, might be your thing. But um, just to kind of clean that up a little bit, just gonna put that back. Is that like two inch gaff that you just have? It's actually um, this is kind of part two of this thing, but it's oh, I just ripped it horribly. It's actually uh, masking or photo tape. Yeah, it's paper and, tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, paper cool. tape. And yeah. uh, I always thought everyone's like, you know, gaffers tape, gaffers tape, gaffers tape. But there's a great video by Grip Tips here or here on YouTube. Definitely watch this video. Just Google or search on YouTube grip tips uh, tape 
and you should find it. And he okay. talks about, he did a ton of research with gaffers and photo tape. It's called, this is actually like cheaper than photo tape, masking tape. And uh, you really shouldn't be using gaffers tape for what I feel like a lot of us use it for. So uh, long and short of it is gaff tape is used for when you need lots of strength, lots and lots of strength. Cause it's, it's essentially, you know, like uh, medical tape on steroids. So this photo tape or, um, even cheaper than that, just paper masking tape, you can get in all the, you know, same kind of colors and it's not going to damage as much, uh, as gaffers tape will. It's not as strong, but it's also significantly less expensive. Let's see if I can get this mm. back in place. Something like that. Not perfect, but yeah, so that's my first one is just a little bit of tape. Um, and if you don't have really thick or wide tape, you can just layer it and kind of put some together if it's on sticks like this. And that's definitely not correct. But you get the idea. Tape, nice. taping everything. And then uh, kind of along with that is uh, uh, putting uh, tabs at the end of your tape. So don't just like, if you're taping something to the wall, don't just push it up against the wall and have the end be flush against the wall. Put a little tab on the end. So when you go to remove it from the wall, uh, you can easily remove it, first of all. But secondly, you're not picking at the edge of the tape. And usually that's the beginning of ruining something. <laughs> Have you guys ever had that? Where you're like yes. trying to pick away at yes. the tape and you're actually pulling uh, on, paint off the wall and stuff? Honestly, like a couple of years ago, uh, for my 40th, uh, I had loads of friends staying with me. And one of my friends, she's got this amazing little girl. She's incredible, but she's into everything, into drawers. And there's the drawers with all my hard drives in. They were staying in my office doubles as our spare room so i just taped i had and it was proper expensive gaff and i taped all the the doors of the the set of drawers <laughs> up on the bits of the desk and when after they left i pulled all the tape off it just pulled all the paint off yeah my wife cried oh man literally yeah. cried yeah, yeah it's not really it's anything. not really low tack and the problem with gaff tape no. also is that when temperatures go up and down that you know it's it's basically fabric which means it's great for like fixing clothes too you can use gaff tape on fabric it works great but when it heats up and then it it you know cools down it can either get much stickier or it can become much lower tack so it's kind of a crapshoot unless you keep it in a, a controlled environment maybe a cigar humidor would be the right place to keep your gaff tape i don't know maybe that's a future episode um i put the link there I think that's the right one, Caleb, in the yeah, actual yeah. chat. Um, so hopefully that works. I also put it in our chat just in case, but I think that's the right one. So, yeah, it's good. Nice, nice. Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's round one. Let's, uh, again, chat, let's hear it. I want to hear about you, all your craziest DIYs on set. Um, and part-time films, yes, you can go ahead and paste the link. I don't know if it'll show up, but... Uh, uh, definitely do that or, or let me know what the name is, what it's called, and I'll hunt it down for you. Uh, so let's go back to Jem, part round two. Wait, okay. I'm number, I thought I'm, I'm number one. Okay. Right? You're right, you're right. Yep. Okay. So, so just this one. a lot, so you just talked, but now you can talk yeah. again. Unless, unless, Ben's, unless Ben's hosting. Unbelievable. <laughs> you're getting in on the action here. Oh, man, um, I can't help myself. I can't help it. It's a, it's the, it's, it's, it's a little redundant if you watch this morning's uh, episode of Gearbox, but this is the a, a little P three twenty six carbon fiber monopod that Suray makes, which I love, and I don't always use it as a monopod uh, in a traditional sense for camera. I'll put a shock mount and a microphone on this because it's so incredibly small. So it's not a it's not a shitty rig, but it's basically using a, a, a monopod as a boom pole. And the reason I love this one is it breaks down to under 16 inches in its shortest length. And so basically you can have a uh oh, there's Ben. Look at Ben. He's got a little face there. Go ahead, Ben. I'm ready for you. No, no, I I love the product. I think it looks great. I completely see where you that it works brilliantly in that alternative method. I yeah. don't feel it's particularly in the spirit of what we were in going for with this. Though. <laughs> <laughs> screw, screw you. Okay, there you go. Um, unbelievable. Uh, you know, let's go. Next. Here's my super. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> so bad. Uh, but it's actually going to be it's actually going to be very usable for people. So whatever, yeah. you know. Go ahead. Good it's great. It's great. No, it's great. It's great. I'll just drink my Knob Creek uh, smoked maple. Go ahead. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, let's bring the light bulb in. All right, boom, <laughs> light bulb in. Uh, there it is. There it is. Okay, so these are amazing. These are from IKEA. And they're incredibly bright. I can't remember exactly what the draw is on them, but they're LED light bulbs, 2,700 Kelvin. So they pretty much, they're, they're warm, warm. But if you're, and whatever it's, um, it's actually rated at, I actually measured it and it's pretty much bang on. So fairly reliable, hugely bright. So if you're doing an interior and you can just go and replace all the bulbs in that space with these, it solves an awful lot of problems very quickly. You get a nice. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait. What? So you're you're countering with a light bulb? But that's the counter. Probably like $4. I thought. I thought. This, I that thought that about not four dollars. Do you remember when I said things that using oh, non-filmmaking stuff for filmmaking, oh, making man. a monopod? Uh, like, mm. oh look, you can use it as a boom pole. Mm. All right, guys. He's got nothing. He I tried to come with something. He's got nothing. I got nothing. I'm got nothing. Fine. That's right. Yeah, I'll use a. I, I, I'll use a paint pole. You're right, Chris. What am I thinking? Okay. Okay. Good. But I, so IKEA LED super bright light bulbs a good thing to have around if you are going to light an interior. There are more expensive and more. Uh, it's not so much color accurate, but that there's um, probably more useful color temperature ranges that are designed specifically for that uh that purpose that our filmmaking product what's the brand oh well, aperture the has theirs coming up their well, rgb yes yeah, so, and so, then um uh quasar has a line i believe quasar. yeah so quasar do a professional version of what i'm talking about but get yourself down to ikea buy one of those for like five six dollars and that doesn't flicker you don't give that flicker no. action which is really you can't, hard dim, it. You can't, you can't dim it though no. Right. Okay. No, no, no. No, no. It is a blunt instrument, but if you are needing to put a lot of light a into blunt it. Instrument. There you go. What? <laughs> no, I, no. I'm, I'm, I'm repeating, repeating what you're saying. You're saying. Nothing, nothing, I, I, nothing, nothing else is happening except, except for repeating, repeating what, you're what you're saying. saying. It's, it's perfect. perfect. Let's, Let's go. go. Okay, Caleb. Let's move, move on. This. <laughs> so, um, oh, man, I'm torn. So, I guess I'll throw this. Well, I'll, are we doing one more round after this? Probably. Yes. Okay, cool. So um, clearly I'm not, but that's okay. I'll be happy to listen to what you guys have. So my next one is um, actually, this is a, a quick side note, an upcoming video I'm going to do. I have, I've been putting together a list of like all these little tips I think of that I can't fill a whole video. So I'm just going to do a series on like 10, 15 tips all at once. And um, uh, one of them is to use your phone if you forget if you forget your microphone whatever or if you just want to stay low budget you can use your phone or your one of these which a lot of us have a pair of apple earbuds uh, as a voiceover setup there's tons of recording apps and if you get your phone just off axis or you know take a piece of kleenex or a, a pillowcase or, or something a sweater throw it over the end of your, your phone and use an app that you can control the level. Don't let it be automatic. You can actually record some pretty phenomenal, you know, it's like, like anything, the closer you get to a microphone, the better it sounds in general. Um, so I think I find that it's a great tip, whether you're a content creator or on the go, or if you need to put it together, a little spec, a friend of mine, uh, constantly uses his own voice for voiceover. Uh, just to get something, some kind of edit together to show a client where the direction's going. So mm. I think that's a great one is uh, voiceover, you know, mm. or, or same thing with your camera. Uh, if you want to do a YouTube video and all you have is a camera, just put the camera right here. And in a pinch, you uh, can get some decent audio. Very good. So it's not, it's not very cardboardy tapey, but you're using a phone for a microphone. So it, I also just as another similar use for it if i can't scout somewhere and we're going to be doing interviews audio critical stuff in a location 
that I get clients to do the same thing with the phone, to go around talking, to at least at least get an idea of the problems that each of those spaces is going to have. Obviously, it's always mm. better to go and do a recce if you can. Yeah. Not all jobs are going to have the budget to be able to do that. So at least if you've got a kind of a heads up from them. Nice. Works. works well. Love it. Uh, Shiznuts, the two best DIY hacks use a tripod to use as a crane. Uh, yeah. Yep, right. Loosening, like shrinking up a leg and kind of yep. doing a, a lean jo- yep. a shot. Um, pivoting with two legs. Then Dave Dugdale's magnet coppler mini tripod fake slider moves. I don't, I don't know that. Out. I don't what know. That sounds Dave like Dugdale. something from that's like you went into a black hole or something. Yeah, we went back to like, Jeez. man, Dave Dugdale's missed that guy. What yeah, happened? Yeah, me too. He's still doing stuff, but it's like once every it's like yeah. once every four months. It's yeah, not, you know, yeah. I miss the. He's yeah, I miss, I miss that him. guy. Yep, you know, him and Juice Blink. What happened? Oh, he was amazing. Yeah, I love that guy. All Good right, guy. round number three. Round three. three. Yeah. Three. Okay. All Here right, we good. go, Jim. Let's do it. So number so number three. This is it. First I found it. Tackle a tripod, and then you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay so this one is based and is kind of you got to use the alexa mini lf as the basis of okay here we go love it so this is this is the the little rig that you can use for basically i talked about having um a microphone above you if you were booming a mic and you're having issues in terms of reflections and stuff like that. You actually have um, your little vlog this week. You have a sound blanket that you put up, um, which are really inexpensive. Those 24 by 48 yeah. sound blankets. Yeah. Um, they're white on one side, black on the other, which is of course you can use for basically for fill or for neg fill as well. They're really inexpensive and they're grommeted. I mean, what is that? Less than $9 for a two by four yeah, it's piece. Like, it's like seven bucks or I can't remember. And it's got grommets in it. It's kind of yep. ridiculous. So awesome. that's amazing. Um, but when I'm in a space that has weird, like sometimes you'll be in a space that actually acoustically seems to be okay, but you stand in a particular place, like I am right now, Ben. Thank you very much. And um, and you'll you'll have all of these weird things happening in that one place. And usually what's happening is you're using a mic that has a hypercardioid or a supercardioid pattern. It's got the tail. It's picking up some weird stuff from above, HVAC or whatever it is. And so basically I just clamp this um, above the microphone and then you have your boomed mic here and it handles those reflections. So obviously it's not handling the whole space, but basically it's just a, a piece of acoustic uh, acoustic panel and then it's on a piece of foam core here so there's something to grip onto so it's not floppy. And then they basically just use double stick, you know, uh, really good double stick tape and put that around on the foam core and then just put that together and it holds up really well and I've been using this for years. So uh, it is more relevant in the old space uh, in New Jersey. But uh, we'll see what happens once I build this bigger space out and if I need some of that stuff as well. So there you go. That's my number three that is actually in the category of a piece of crap. But uh, there you go. Nice. There you go. That's yeah. a fantastic one. That's very good. Oh, she's not says Gem talks audio, but I have the worst audio. I'm not hearing what everybody is hearing. <laughs> so obviously my audio is a piece of crap today. But um, I'm hopefully, not noticing you know, like, like awfulness. I mean – I'm cheating because Jem actually like both of you are wearing lobs. I, I'm sticking a microphone like in my face and in the shot, so that's not fair. Yeah, but yeah, I, and, think, and, and I, I think I'm in a hotel room with soft furnishings. Mm, but yeah. to be to be fair, Jem, what that did nicely demonstrate that you have got so much bounce back going on that when you did put your little board over there, yeah, we could notice it working. Did you really? Oh, that's really Honestly. nice. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 you can hear it a little bit. Put yeah. it like this. Um, put it like right up against your face. Like on the side of your face. Yeah, that's better. Like down right a here? Bit, down a bit. Right, right. Is this great? Yeah, okay, so great. it's really great. Just you guys are amazing. Just, <laughs> you guys are stuck. Just cut a hole in it and just, just stick your face through it. <laughs> April 15th, 2020. Good luck. I'm going to be ordering all the food at Lotus as I am, by the way, and I'm also going to choose the heat level. I don't think okay. Ben has a problem with it, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I love, I love Caleb on set up there. I know you do. Once. Hot ones. Let's do it. I can't wait. Poisoning me with garlic. 
that would be a blast actually if if all three of us did our own hot ones that'd be fun let's do it oh that would be Um, amazing yeah yeah, what intense okay okay uh okay so ben Number three. Right. By the way, by the way, I'm in a mannequin free zone right now. I just want to state that. So I just, you know, just <laughs> Caleb almost lost some basil right there. Okay, let's go. We're going. Okay. <laughs> so I, I can't demonstrate this one right now, but the shower, mannequin? Curtain, shower curtain poles. Mm. Mm. Really useful. So these are the ones that use pressure to push against walls to stay in place. So you need to put something between the pole and the wall so that you don't mark it. Uh, Manfrotto make a proper version of this. And I can't remember what they call them. What do they call those products? Oh. So you put them in a vertical thing and then they, they push up and the pressure. They have them, in place. impact has them. Um, yeah. What do you call them? Not spreaders. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing, uh, what's his face isn't here. Well, she's not his fault uh, filling in inappropriately, which I'm, I'm trying to, trying to keep him. Exactly. Wall spreader. Yeah, well, okay. So a shower your, curtain. Your hotel your, room, not mine. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I'm ready. If you're no, I'm wanting to uh, either you can use it for a window that doesn't have anything on it and you're needing to diffuse light, you can then just tape, put some clothes pegs on it. C47s, whatever, you can use those in all sorts of ways. They're very light, they're very cheap. Even this space where we are now, I could actually make a softbox out of. It's a little alcove where the desk yeah. is. I could put this across, drop a piece of diffusion down. You can buy those cheap sheets of diffusion for I think about five, six dollars on Amazon for fairly large uh, sheets. Clip those on, and then you've got a softbox because you can bounce into the wall and back off. Just a really versatile bit of kit for Very absolutely nice. no money. Um, I'll, I'll tack onto that. And if you, mm-hmm. let's say you don't have two walls, mm. you just need to hang some, you know, blackout or duvetine or diffusion. Uh, I learned this from my buddy, uh, Corbin Tyson. Um, you take one of our nano stands that we all know and love. Mm-hmm. And one of our nano clamps that we all know and love, and you thread that yeah. at the top, and then you throw the pole on there. You throw it off mm-hmm. one side over a leg, and then you know, hang some bed sheet, whatever. I have I have done the exact same thing. And the then if you thing. want to get extra jank, I, I didn't bring the radio over, but if I have an old broken radio or fine one with the antenna, the old school ones with really thick antennas that extend blah, 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 just like all the stages yeah yeah yeah, yeah just yeah. clip that off and throw it in your bag it weighs like nothing and you can use that or tape that to a stand and that's it's brilliant. just strong <laughs> enough to hold uh diffusion yeah that and it's that, like that's big. i know exactly what you're talking about so get like an old boom box yeah an old and trash just, yeah, box and just unthread off the <laughs> antenna or i think off. parts Bart's little tip is great, which is you get the travel pack empty Q-tips um, container, and he mm-hmm. puts uh, a lav mic and the cable perfectly inside mm-hmm. of there. You can also buy it really inexpensively on uh, Amazon those little cases that hold uh, AA batteries, and you don't have to put AA batteries in them, and they're great for holding little pieces of kit, and they just snap closed, and you can buy like three or five packs of those for nothing. And you can use it to hold lots of little pieces of GAC uh, and stuff like Love that. Love it. Bill Pan uh, says auto poles, which is what those are called. It's a version of it. Yeah. There's like yes, the air. You're like, whoosh, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. And then uh, Bill Pan also says, hey, C47, do you have a DIY solution with a C47? Well, there's a company that actually does it now. They call it uh, Bullet. Um, but basically, if you take the spring in a C47 and you take it out and you reverse it, then it opens up uh, to a much wider opening. And so you can basically do a reverse close pin. And that's uh, really handy sometimes because it just doesn't open up large enough. It's also when you flip it, it's really it's smooth, smooth on the, on other, the other, side. other side. So when you're, so when you're holding diffusion, diffusion and stuff, and stuff what, what, is what, what is that smirk there? right there? Caleb, Caleb, something's, something's going on. on. I don't know going what's on. going on. <laughs> Shiznuts uh, deleted a comment. No, I, no, deleted, I deleted it. it. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, yeah, that one went too far. I'm, I'm oh, okay. all game oh, for a lot of things. It. That one I couldn't do. That one was going to get me. I'm, I got to keep the channel going here. I got a paltry, you know, like seven subscribers here. So let's keep it somewhat okay. It's all good. It's all good, dude. Uh, <laughs> well, you, a, can repo- you can point. repost it. It's it, yeah. he made a good point, and uh, but I mean, yeah, it's totally. Wait funny. for the wait for the one that I deleted. I mean, it's a it's a it's a valid point, but not necessarily one that we'll we'll use in the let, chat. But that's fine. Let, read, fine. let, let I don't know if I deleted I the one behind, you're thinking I stand of. Beside, I stand behind your decision. Now let me see. Uh, it, uh, it's, a, it's a way to transport <laughs> C forty <47. laughs> seven. It's ridiculous. Um, I, I could post it, but I don't know. It's, it's all. No. It's all good. Don't all worry. Right, I don't know. Worry it, it is Move definitely on. a way to. Oh my Get god! On. You're okay. amazing. Uh, where are we at? That was Ben, right? Or uh, I, then yes. I went. I think. Oh yes, you did. You followed. You did the oh, follow on. So yeah, yeah. He's sort of following. Yeah, and then I'll also I'll also throw in uh, kind of off of your your LED light. Uh, I did a video on this twenty dollar closet light. Yes, I saw that uh, video. Yes, he grad. Calm down. I know. I can already tell he's trying to write something up. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it's great. It's a uh, twenty bucks, and so you can tape them, hide them, and in, in pra- make practicals, or you know, give a little uh, little spice to your to your backgrounds. All right, Jim, round four. What? Oh, I have a round four. Oh, gee, you know, we don't. You know, we're well. Kinda, we're I'll, I'll do it. Down. I think I think that my round four is my round four is kind of lame because everybody knows about it, but it's just going to a home improvement store and buying uh, essentially foam core in different sizes. We've talked about it a million times. Silver on one side, you know, white on the other. Occasionally you get really lucky and it's actually pure white. Um, And then you just put white gaff tape around the edges and. I build four by fours that collapse down into two by fours and I have other ones that are hanging around and I just have lots of bits and pieces. And if I just need to take a you know clamp and I just need to get a little bit of extra light somewhere, it's sometimes so much easier to grab one of these and grab some light and push it somewhere else in the space than it is to actually set up even a battery powered light. So um, those nano stands that we know and love, you know, those little clamps that we know and love, especially mini grip heads with mini Mathalini clamps and just pieces of foam core, you can just get light into different places. The silver is great if you just want to kiss or have like a little something happening in the background and you can just get little strips of them. I mean, you're just grabbing a little bit of light. So at least, you know, a foot wide maybe and uh 18 inches long but you can do a lot with even the piece of uh foam core with silver on one side and uh basically beadboard on the other uh not foam core but beadboard and and silver so those are very very handy that's what i'm using right now for for the fill over here i've got a big one uh here Uh, there it is and there you can see look even the silver is just grabbing some of the kicker light and you can see what's happening on the background and you see how that that's basically sweeping and you can use these for gags as well like poor man's process for cars passing you know you can just take the silver there and you can just you know pretend that light sweeping across or there's a car passing a window so it has lots of different uses so there you go I've, i i didn't have number four ready but that's something there you go hmm. nice hmm. that that's mm-hmm. an excellent one and was was going to be my my last one as well but 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 how about you don't do a last one, and then I actually had three legitimate ones, and then one completely yeah. ass one. All right. So how about <laughs> then? So I was going on another another slight tangent. The oh, here we most go. the the jankiest thing you've ever rigged. Mine. Oh man! I'll, I'll Hold on, real, real quick before you jump in, I just want to yeah. say: uh, Is it high, high new one? Or when I have a friend who prefers it as when uh, if you're still in the chat, welcome. Love that you're here and uh, love that you were able to make the show. He says he uh, normally isn't able to and he's uh, happy to be here uh, toward the end, actually making it live. So welcome, yeah, dude. Welcome. Love yeah, it. Hello. All right. Sorry. Continue. Good, sir. So I, I think that this the sketchiest one I've done was with a boat that I got a tiny little inflatable boat wedged a tripod into it ratchet strapped it down into it had the thing floating in the middle of a lake dropped heavy stuff into the lake 
in three points around the boat, used ratchet straps to then pull the boat to where I needed it. This was to get this night shot, this really long exposure off a boat of this <laughs> amazing hotel with all these, which, and the hotel hadn't even been wired up yet, all the garden lighting. So we'd lit, I think we'd 200, you know, the little tea light candles. Mm. Oh yeah, the little, the little tiny ones, yep. Yeah, that you buy in big bags from Ikea again. Yeah, yeah. So we, we put these all down the jetty, like the dock, and uh, all around the hot tub, and all around the, the terrace. And then I put this thing on there. I'm, I spent all afternoon getting this boat to exactly where it needed to be. Managed to then have to get out of the boat and get back to shore, leaving the camera on a 30 second timer, just repeating, doing that shot again and again and again, and had to leave it for two hours, hoping that the boat that it was on was gonna be stable enough Ridiculous. to actually give a long enough exposure with no movement in. And that hotel is still using that image. And this is one of the best hotels in the UK as their hero image 10 years on. Wow. Nice. <laughs> But it was the sketch. We were sitting in there, and then they fed me while we were waiting for this shot to come off. And going, duh, we've spent all day at this. What am I going to do? What am I going to tell them if <laughs> this thing it hasn't worked? And it worked. Now there's a million and one products and different ways that we could have done that. Uh, cameras being able to be um, a lot cleaner at higher ISOs, and yeah. But at the time, that was it. Was the sketchiest, weirdest rig I've ever made, but it worked. But it just looked terrible. Crazy. There you go. Yeah. Interesting. Can you think of one, uh, Jam, or do you need a sec? I, I mean, I've done a lot of janky things. I've just basically done stupid things. But one time we just had no counterweight. And this is not a shitty rig, really, but it looked pretty jank when we did it, which is essentially a C stand with a, car, uh, a grip head and a Cardellini clamp. And then we put another C stand off of that. And we used the legs of the C stand as the counterbalance for the light fixture because we had no more sandbags or anything like that. So there was enough weight and it was really kind of dodgy because um, it was a pretty big source that we were using uh, with a soft box and stuff, but it, it looked pretty crappy, but in reality it wasn't anything too, you know, too crazy. That's yeah. a solid. But it was on a real shoot. Yeah. yeah. It's just not something you want your client seeing. Which, you know, fortunately I was doing a, a commercial for, I was DPing a commercial for a friend's company in New York and the client wasn't really present, meaning that there was somebody from the client side there, but they weren't there. If you know what I mean, they just, they were oblivious to the production. They were happy to sit there and have a drink and kind of let the thing go on. And when they would go up to the client and say, are you happy with this? It was just sort of like nodding, um, which in some ways is really great, but in some ways is terrifying because that's the person who's representing the brand and is supposed to be essentially the keeper of the brand. And you're looking at it and like, are they going to be happy with this when they look at it in post? That wasn't my problem on that particular shoot, but it also meant that we could do what we did and they weren't, you know, they weren't doing a second look and stuff like that. So, yeah. What about you, Caleb? What's the, what is like the, um, shoot, the one that comes to mind? And I, I sort of put one together and then it disappeared. Uh, up, 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 up. One of you want to read the chat here for a second? Yeah. I, I, think it's good. Yeah. I was thinking as well when he said not present. Yeah, possibly. Actually, there are a lot of agency people who look like they're drugged. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's just the way it goes. Um, what do we got here? So we've got some, we are using thousands of bucks of equipment and then want to cheap out on something silly as batteries. Yeah, you don't want to do that yeah. for sure. I don't know Speaking what that is. batteries, yeah. I just recalled mine. Yeah. Um, I was using a reputable, repu reputable, 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 that reputable, reputable, that reputable, reputable. There's a couple words that I just can't say it. Uh, brand, actually one that's very well known for power. Yeah. I, won't, I won't give them away, but, um, and they're, they're, I was essentially running a bunch of GH fives or GH fours at the time and, uh, powered up, you know, plugged into the wall, didn't want to deal with batteries and it, it was failing miserably. So, um, on the set we were on, there was like a bunch of, you know, various electronics and I was able to, with someone that was working there, um, they let me take a power supply, like a power brick that was similar voltage. And I, I yeah. cut it open with my Leatherman and hot, hot wire. <laughs> 
I cut the power supply off of the uh, because it was one of those dummy batteries, right? Dummy battery goes to the wall. Yeah. And I just cut it, separated positive, negative, and just kind of threaded it on there and put a little gaff tape around it. And we uh, pressed on. And it worked. And you didn't burn the place down. Nope. Just don't oh, let the positive, negative touch and get the voltage similar and you're good to go. Nice. Similar. I like similar. Just, well, that's just make sure like, it's in the ballpark. All these batteries we work with, they're 6.8 to 8.4 volts. That's like the operating yeah. voltage of a battery. So yep. you get it, you know, you get it in there somewhere. Although the, the cameras are getting more picky, which blows. But what are you going to do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there you go. What about you guys in the chat? Anything that just was uh, just brutal? I mean, I, I've done lots of stuff where it's, you know, your diffusion is just essentially like looks like a drape thrown over a dirty black garbage bag. You're using Probably. this stuff, which I didn't get to. Tons of black wrap and diffusion. It yeah. looks awful, but it works. Yep. Use, have you done the thing where you then having to counterbalance? I know you were saying about using a stand. I've had the thing with using straps down to camera cases and all the rest of it. Again, all this stuff that it all works, but you don't want to don't want clients to see that yeah. stuff. I've piled it just oh. looks awful. <laughs> I've piled <laughs> random uh <laughs> ready tidy lefty Lucy. I've piled <laughs> random stuff on on stands, you know. Like you know, you take a desk, yes. you pull it over, and you put one one leg on the on the stand or something. Bart Bart used an air yeah. hockey table cover as neg fill. Happened about two weeks ago. Makes total sense. Nice. That Beautiful. is the thing. Once you've been doing this for a long time, it doesn't matter as long as it's white or it's black. You can use it as neg fill, or you can use it as bounce or diffusion, as long as it's not completely opaque. And uh, I think anything's fair game when there's no client around. I mean, there's just I've done whatever. You just you just make it work. You got to handle what you got to handle. So it's a beautiful thing. Um, nice, man. Uh, we got some good chat going on today. I would like to hear about some more shitty rigs for sure. Yeah, please. And, if, um, if you haven't already, go to that website. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. A great time, and uh, you might actually learn a thing or two. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of lulls. Another one uh, that's not film related, but will just, it's a great night just watching this Reddit or reading it or looking at the photos. Uh, Google, uh, there I fixed it, Reddit. That will blow your mind. It's essentially a whole bunch of people showing their, there I fixed it, and just awful solutions to things. It's It's wonderful. It's wonderful. One of, my, one of my favorites is uh, duct tape around cats that look like a diaper. And it said, there, I fixed it. No more kitties. <laughs> no more kitties. It's phenomenal. It's great, great subreddit. Unbelievable. That's amazing. Um, what, what are we doing for next week? Because uh, Ben is going to be the host. He's going to get his miles for NAB, and then he's going to be the host next week. So, so what's our topic? Um, any suggestions while we have a couple of minutes? Um, anybody chat. on the chat? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I like Ben. Ben over email was talking about a uh, a, a certain priced like machine to edit on. I feel like Gem and I would just go with Apple equipment. Yeah, Unless but I was wondering because, used... because but if we were talking about but within that, we're not just talking about the main editing sort of hardware at the center of it, which would be. Uh, whether that's an iMac, a MacBook Pro, whether it's a PC in my case, but it's all the peripheral stuff around it that you need to make that work. It's about what are you using to monitor, what are you using to make hard sure drive. that it's displaying the color properly, hard drives. Yeah, storage, is the storage fast enough. There's quite a lot to that other yeah. than just that's the machine. An, I like so I think that. I like that. I think that. That's still that's with the, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Is more, that... more than just, yeah, Mac, new new macbook pro sure can you send me can you send me a title and description before the end of the week so we all have some time to think about it and get something together for next wednesday and what price um, would you do? i think yeah. five grand would be grand. probably right yeah I for think everything five. cool I would yeah, yeah i think software so included? now i think we should do software too yeah software yeah. yeah um the the one thing that we should bring up right now is looking at the calendar we have Wednesday, uh, December 25th, Christmas. Not that everybody celebrates that, but I know that we do. 
and I believe uh, you do, Ben, in your household. You're British. Do, it doesn't but matter. We did the day, but we did the day before in Czech, so we did the okay. Fourth. Yeah, but we do Christmas Eve, but Christmas Day. But it's yeah. probably not going to be a Cameron Flask Day, and then I would say not. And then the following right. week is New Year's Day, so I think we're going to have to play that by ear, and we're going to have to talk mm. about it. So it's an odd year where we've kind of got this. Um, the only thing I would say is that maybe we save this this challenge for the five thousand dollars for the beginning of the year, and next week we kind of do a roundup of twenty nineteen of maybe some of our favorite products and things that were released. And I only say that because if for some reason we don't come back for, which is ridiculous until the beginning of January, then, um, you know, then we kind of yeah. get to do a wrap of some of our stuff. Any thoughts on that? Top mm -hmm. picks of 2019. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Or the 11th. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be stuff. It's at least announced and it's coming to market hopefully shipping by the end of the year, but what are the things that we think are the the products that are sort of taking us into next year or even products that we've been using actively um, throughout the year, but they have to have been something that were, uh, was announced this year. And, and gotcha. you know, yeah. So not just our favorite favorite award. Kit. Why don't we do awards? We each yes. pick our top, I don't know, three things. Three to five three things. things. We'll see yeah. what each of us picked. The most like influential slash groundbreaking within you know kind of our niche, which is that not airy or LF level, yep. but you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has to be within reason. So the camera systems have to be under twenty thousand dollars US, and everything else has to fall under that price bracket too. But it's just sort of our favorite stuff that would be owner operator stuff. It wouldn't be something yeah. that you would have to go rent. So you're not. It's not a sky panel. It's not a an Alexa. Uh, basically, Aries out, unfortunately, um, unless uh, you, you include the Airy, uh Sky Panel app, then that you can include that if you want. To, that's <laughs> free. But that's about it. And uh, but everything else is pretty much fair game as long as it's under twenty thousand dollars US. And then and, maybe uh, a little, little yeah. baby segment on our, our favorite show of, of the year. Slash our uh, favorite oh. show so far. Uh, our favorite episode. Class? Fun okay, memory good. from favorite episode. Okay, good. So, can you write up a little title and description on your Miles uh, flight, Ben, and get that, that to us of what that'll be? And then uh, we'll all start doing some research uh, before next Wednesday. Gives us a little time to prep that. Is that cool? That's cool. Great. Awesome. Right. Um, safe flight, Ben, or flights. And it Flat was uh, 2019 next week. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'll be in eight yeah. next week. But What does that mean? When I'm already blocky and oh, you mean you'll be at mom's house? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. It's all good. It's got a, got a, a warm quality to it. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we've wrapped up the show. Make sure you subscribe on your way out. It's free, uh, so you should do that. And you'll see videos here of all three of us, as well as uh, the guy in the bottom right there, that beautiful man. Jem Schofield. So let's wrap up this one. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, blast as usual. Hope you all have a wonderful evening. Um, uh, anything to say there, Jem or Ben, as I as I end this thing? Just thanks to everybody. To you guys. Yeah, been... um, I appreciate you guys very much. Love you guys. And, uh, and everybody who comes to the chat every week and keeps this thing going, it is uh, for, for, I think, the three of us and for the people that come, it's just sort of that little hour that kind of lets us not think about other things and just shoot the shit. And it's, uh, it's kind of amazing how different my relationship with Ben is on the show than it is in real life, <laughs> which is, which is part of the, the fun of doing Cameron flask because, um, the, the dirty little secret is that, uh, Ben and I actually get along famously and we basically never argue about anything. We never give each other shit about. We pretty much agree about everything. And that's we what's do. so fun about uh, Cameron Flask is that we just take the piss out of each other. And it makes it even more fun to do the show every week. Yeah. It's anybody else? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All the best. Yeah, awesome. All right, folks. Uh, good night and good day. We will see you next week with a fresh episode. Until then, take care. Good night. All the best, everyone. Take care.